Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's SS454LS6 here, and it's time to set the Phytech up for timing control. Now, I've put this off for quite some time because I wanted to make sure the Phytech standalone unit was working decently before I moved on to this system. And now that I have the tune-up set pretty good, I feel confident that we can get the ignition control to work reasonably well. Now, I already learned that my distributor, which I thought was going to work, is not because this is a MSD8360 ready to run three wire distributor and Phytech is very clear that it needs to be a two wire distributor. So I had to go out and buy a new distributor that is two wire and compatible with the Phytech unit. So I'm going to take you to the bench and I'll show you closer what we have to do to this to get it to work with our system. So this is a Performance World billet distributor. Performance World is a Canadian-based company that sells cheaper products. It's kind of like your Summit Racing or Jags brand product. Um, a lot cheaper, obviously. Uh, the MSD Pro billet would have been about $450 Canadian, whereas this was $207. Um, difference in quality? Well, I can tell you the uh, the shaft does not spin nearly as freely as the MSD does. Mind you, there has been no oil going to it just yet. Uh, the plastic cap does feel a little cheaper, uh, but it does have you know brass terminals, which is good. Um, it is a billet aluminum shaft, so you know it seems all right. You you can see that this is a slip collar design, and what I'm going to do to make sure this aligns the same as it did is I'll take my MSD distributor and I'm just going to match them up and make sure that they align the same way. So that should be simple enough. Now, I mentioned about the two wire. You can see this connector does not go to an MSD type connection. Even though these say they're, they're for MSD type boxes, this won't work. So I had to pick up an MSD uh, connector kit. Uh, so then I will have to cut these off and put these new connectors on so it will work with the Phytech. Um, it's unfortunately a little bit of an extra cost. This was $11, so not the end of the world. But uh, to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is lock out the distributor. So what we have to do first is pull the cap off and go from there. So this is a centrifugal advanced rotor, uh, but we do not need any of this centrifugal advanced mechanism. So we're gonna pull the springs and remove these advanced weights. Hopefully I can, hopefully I can do this without losing the springs. One. Oops. <laughs> Try not to lose these bushings. Not that I plan on using them ever, but still, I don't want to really lose them. Like that. Like so. Then underneath the distributor, let's see if I can get you to see that right there, this nut on the bottom here right there All right that gets uh, removed with a I am using a seven mil wrench it seems to be the one to use yeah that works but I think it's actually a different size In any case what I'm gonna do before I actually pull that off is the roll pin right here I'm just going to pound that out first because I'll obviously I need to get this the shaft elevated so I can actually rotate it. So I'll, uh, I'll punch this out with a hammer and a, I don't know, punch or something. And then uh, we'll go from there. So with the roll pin out, I can now get rid of this nut under here. Before I take that out, you can see how the mechanical advance works. You know, that little stop bushing in there allows this to move that much. So when I lock it out, this won't be able to move at all. So 
So now we move up the shaft like so. I can pull out the bushing. That's the original stop bushing there. I rotate this 180 degrees and I push the shaft back in like that. Oops, losing some washers here. Don't want to do that. Okay, and now you can see that when I turn it, there's no more mechanical advance. It is locked out. So with the distributor locked out, I can now reinsert my roll pin and continue with the installation. So now I can go ahead and install the new rotor, which I am using an MSD adjustable rotor, part number 84211. This is going to be needed so I can phase the rotor, which is important for when you're setting up timing control. So to put the cap on, there are two different sizes screws that come with the kit, a 5 8 and a 3 quarter. It looks like because I'm using a deeper you know, magnet pickup um, or a taller one, I need to use the 5 8 screws. And now the adjustable part can go back on, which is this side goes like this. Like that. And we can reinsert the final screw. So on the adjustable rotor, there are these little lines right here which represent degrees of timing. And I guess for every one mark, that's one degree, but it's actually two degrees of ignition timing because of the crankshaft to camshaft ratio. So if I advance this 10 degrees, it's actually 20 degrees to the engine. Now, as at least I think I have that right. So um, that's how the phasing system kind of works. But now I have to actually figure out how to phase this, well, on the engine. So moving on. So before I could put the distributor in the car, there was one thing that was quite confusing to me. The instructions say I'm supposed to align these fingers right here to be centered with the magnetic pickup here before I make adjustments to my rotor. Now, the idea would be that it's the strongest spark possible to center as it can be, which kind of makes sense. However, as soon as you rotate the shaft of your distributor when you're setting your timing, that alignment is going to change. So I called up Neighbors75, who's a bit of a Phytech expert. You can check out his channel in the link below in the description. And he said to ignore all that, forget it. What to do is you set your base timing on your engine through the timing tape. So I rotated my engine 18 degrees before top dead center on the, I guess, compression stroke. And what that means now is I have 18 degrees of base timing, which means the minimal amount of timing my Phytech system can do or my engine can do is 18 degrees. So hence base timing. And from there, I go to the adjustable MSD cap and I rotate it clockwise like so. And I'm talking just the adjustable part, right? So you rotate it. And what I did is I rotated mine 15 notches. I don't know if you can see that. So I made mine 15 notches, which is 30 degrees of sweep timing based on the two to one ratio between crankshaft and camshaft. And the way this made sense to me was if you look at this little instruction right here, I flipped it upside down and if you imagine, let's see if I can get this to not be glary. Okay, if you imagine this is my number one terminal post here, if I have this rotated, whatever in this case, 15 notches, that's full retard. And then when it advances, it's going to move over to the other end of the post. So you want that range right here to be as wide as you can, but still strong enough to have a, a, a quality spark. So that's what I've done. So now that this is all set, I can then put it in the engine, and theoretically this should be pretty close, to uh, so I don't have to make too many adjustments to sync it, but uh, we're going to throw it in the car and find out. So after I dropped in the distributor, my confusion immediately came back. Now I installed this so that the rotor was pointed in the direction or in line with the number one cylinder, which is what you're supposed to do. You can see the alignment mark I made when I first pulled the original distributor. And keep in mind that rotor is currently phased the 15 degrees that I showed you before. Now the problem is, or where I started to run into the issue with the confusion, was I used this 
vent here as kind of like my reference for the front of the engine. I called this right here my number one post. But the problem is when you rotate your cap and distributor, the, the body of the distributor, that obviously is going to affect your timing because it changes the relationship between the rotor and the post as well as the magnetic pickup that's around here and the fingers on the distributor. So I was like, no matter which way I turn this, either this was going to be a dead spot or this would be off. And then it dawned on me, why don't I turn this more and make this my number one cylinder? Because now I'm in perfect alignment with the fingers to the magnetic pickup right here. And now my tip of the rotor is slightly off to the side of my number one post, which if I go back to this little instructions right here, you can see which is what we want. So this would be the, the uh, tip of the rotor, and that would be the post right there. It's just off the side. I confirm that using these, the giant holes I cut through the top. So obviously this is my test cap. This is gonna be the original cap. So now that I got that figured out, I can now install my spark plugs. Now speaking of which, this was the cap that came off uh, the distributor I had before. You can see this is the socket style. The new uh, distributor is an HEI style. So I had to get new spark plug pliers. Now I made the mistake of not searching my own part number. I went to the parts store and I said, get me some for a big block Chevy. They gave me the wrong ones. I installed them and they were wrong and then I can't return them because they were used. So the right ones you're supposed to get, at least from what I can tell, let's see if we can zoom that in, Part number 35379, at least if you have a, I think it's a 66 to 73 or something, big block Chevy. So, yeah, that's 160 bucks down the toilet. But in any case, I should be able to install this and get moving on to the Fitex side. So moving into the car to the handheld, the first thing I did was I downloaded the T198i software from Fitech. To get it, you just email Fitech, tell them your model number, I'm running the 30012 1200 horsepower unit, and you have to tell them if you have the arrows or no arrows on your handheld, apparently that makes a difference. They will send you the file with the instructions on how to install it. I'm not going to show you how to install it because, well, just read the instructions. Now, when you clear it, you are going to lose your tune, the old tune. So before I erased mine and installed the new software, I went through and took pictures of my uh, the, you know, adjustments that I made so I could import that onto the new tune. And I did that mostly through the laptop because it's just a little bit easier for me to do and, and it's a little bit quicker. And so I'm hoping that with these little adjustments that it's going to be a, a little bit easier to um, get going on the new software. And there's a couple of reasons I went with the new software. One is under the timing uh, control, it's, it gives a few more options. Mainly, I can lock out the uh, the timing. Uh, from what I know, that's going to make the synchronizing and the phasing quite a lot easier because I can set the timing to a certain degree and it's, you know I just target that timing. So that'll be good. And also, this has the ability to do uh, a two-step. It's built into the, the unit. So I'm going to be installing a two-step and using it through the Fitech. So we'll see how that goes at a later time. Um, so now, yeah, we can get on to actually you know, setting up the Fitech itself. So from here, I will go down to the, uh, where are we going to? Initial setup? Yes. So under engine setup, we got us go down to the tack or two wire coil. Let's see if I can zoom in this a little bit better. And there we go. So we have to set that to VR coil because we are not using the tack. We, this is running through the, the two wire distributor and through my uh, CDI. So that is set like that. So now we go down to the ignition setup and from here you can see where that locked out adjustment is. Uh, distributor based timing that I will set to 18 degrees because that's what I have my base timing set to. They say don't worry about the decimal point. So we'll see if that matters or not. And for now, that's all I'm going to set it to. The VR drift, that's going to be something that's important later as well. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So with this now set, I should be able to start the engine. I'll tell you guys, the first start of the season is always a bit nerve wracking to me, especially when I've had the engine a little bit apart, uh, new parts going on. So you never know if it's going to work. So, uh, 
But hey, there's only one way to find out if it works, and, uh, and that's a try. Well, I ran into a bit of a snafu, but I think I know the reason why. When I was doing a once over of the engine, I was leaning over, and this right here is my hood pin wire, and that flopped over and touched the one of the actually actually on the ground side of my um, horn relay, and that turned the wire red hot and melted it. So this is now nubbed off because the rest melted. In any case, I'm thinking, well, that's not very good. I mean, I'm sending, what, 30 plus amps all through the chassis. And obviously when I turn the key, complete electrical failure. So what I did was I connected the two wires down there um, off the relay, I bypassed the relay, and then I opened up the, the door and I had a light inside again. So I went and got a new one of these and hooked it all back up and now everything seems to be back to normal. So I'm hoping that everything's okay. Well, this is going to be take two to see if this is going to start, so fingers crossed. Well, it starts. But I lost my handheld. What's going on there? Well, it seems the handheld is working okay. Uh, it must have been a bit of a glitch. Uh, the engine fired right up, which is great. I'm happy about that. And I went ahead and synchronized the you know, my timing to the handheld and did a little bit of phasing as well. So the best way to do that is go to your initial setup, ignition setup, and you set this to locked. And you do this when the engine's running, you'll notice a change in the, you know, the tone of the engine. That's because it's now running off of this timing right here. Now the reason why I have mine set to 33 degrees is because with 18 degrees base and a 48 degree total timing, Right in the half of that, dead center, is 33 degrees. So once I had that, my timing synchronized to here, so what I saw in my timing light, I matched the 33 degrees, I locked down my distributor, and then I went on to the, the rotor phasing, where as I drew a line on the rotor itself, and also on the number one post of the cap, and I tried to get that lined up to be dead center at 33 degrees. Like I said, that's half my uh, my sweep. So theoretically, I should now be okay to have a 15 degree plus or minus sweep to that, giving me my 48 degrees total timing. The next step, well, oh, before I say that, you should, don't worry too much about running you know, 30 plus degrees here at idle because there's no load on the engine. You should be just fine. Also, when you lock the, the timing here, when you start the engine again, it's going to unlock. It doesn't permanently set it, so you should be okay for that as well. The next step is to do the VR drift at 4,000. So I rev the engine to 4,000 RPM, and I use my timing light to see what is showing there, and I need to make sure that it stays at the 33 degrees. So I need to... You're going to use this number here to make... Uh, to adjust for any variables. So I've completed the VR drift at 4000 and what I was seeing is obviously I have my timing set to 33 degrees but I was seeing 35, 36 degrees or so at 4000 RPM. So I moved this number down because that's, you know, it was at 8.8. .8. I moved it down to 6, assuming 2.6 degrees. And it seemed like it moved at like 5 or 6 degrees in on my timing. So I don't know if that's like a 2 to 1 ratio or not. Because I ended up moving it down, it looks like 1.3 degrees. And now I'm right within spec. So uh, definitely handy if you have a second person in the vehicle to hold the RPM at 4,000. It, it'll make things a lot easier. But it is doable with one person. So this is the custom timing table that I've created for my engine. Just keep in mind, I've adjusted my brake points so that 45 kPa is actually um, 37.5, 95 kPa is 70, and 180 is going to be 95. Also, that 6,000 RPM is actually 5,500 RPM. So you can always go into your brake points and adjust those for your engine. You can take a look at my old video with the pro tuning and you can see how to do that yourself. Now for me, I've set this to 24 degrees of idle timing. Uh, I, I feel uh, some additional timing is beneficial. And you can see these are my cruise, you know, timings right there. I'm actually running at relatively not maxed out yet. Uh, I'm trying to play it a bit safe, but uh, obviously we'll have to drive it to see what it's going to do. 
Uh, 70 kpi, that's kind of more mid-throttle, so you know a little bit more timing, but again, back down. And then at full throttle, um, I have it at only 20 degrees there at the low RPMs and a maximum of 36 degrees at 6,000. I may even adjust that one right there, I don't know. So I'll play around with this. I need to drive it and uh, see how it goes, but we are set for timing control. And now, uh, hopefully, I can uh, just add a little bit more fine-tuning to this whole EFI adventure and go from there. So if you guys like the video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you can, and thanks for watching.